So this project starts off with my old drill powered e-bike. In this video, I'll show you how I upgraded my drill powered e-bike to a brushless motor e-bike. Enjoy! So I start off by removing the brackets I used on my old e-bike. Then I hammer off the bike pegs. So here's what the bike looks like after I remove the old brackets from my old e-bike. Then I welded on a piece of steel to serve as a bracket for the electric motor. I start off by using half inch square tubing that will help the motor bolt onto the piece of steel I welded on. Now I bolt the motor on by installing bolts to the square tubing which will connect to the motor. This pretty much just clamps the electric motor to the piece of steel I welded on earlier. For the chain tensioner, I started off by welding the steel arm together. Then I drilled the proper holes for it. For the idler sprocket, I just bought a generic one for bikes off of Amazon. So basically, after I bolt the chain tensioner onto the motor's faceplate, I attach the spring to the small bracket on the bottom of the motor. This will cause the idler sprocket to pull towards the chain and apply pressure onto the chain. The electric motor I have also came with a speed controller, and I ended up buying a 48 volt 10 amp hour battery to power it. After hooking these up, I tested the bike's drive system. Now I welded on those square tubes to the seal bracket I installed earlier. This ensures the motor can mount on the same exact spot in case I have to take it off. Then I started cutting down a half inch PVC sheet for the enclosure. I ended up using three 4 inch wide pieces that were 24 inches long. I started to design a steel bracket for the enclosure to bolt onto. I plan on welding these pieces of steel onto the bike. Now I thread the holes.
When I wanted to place my first enclosure piece of PVC onto the bike, this piece was blocking the PVC from mounting flush with the steel plate. So I ended up drilling a large hole to create clearance so that it would fit without hitting that wire bracket. Then I also drilled out the holes for the bolts that will connect the enclosure to the steel bracket I made earlier. For the front plate of the bike, I ended up flattening a piece of PVC pipe with a heat gun. Then I formed it to make the best possible fit for the front plate. So I also noticed the enclosure for the e-bike was fairly wobbly on the bottom. So I installed these threaded rods to act as supports for the bottom of the enclosure. Then I screwed the e-bike motor controller in place. So basically this frame for the enclosure was pretty tricky to cut and mount. This is the result so far. Now that the main frame is mounted, I started by doing a cardboard cutout of the side panels. Then I traced it onto a quarter inch PVC sheet. So after cutting out the side panel, I used a flush cut router bit to get the side panels flush with the main enclosure. So now I cut out three pieces of PVC and started screwing them together to form the main bracket for the headlight. So on the electrical side of the headlight, I 3D printed out a battery adapter for the 24 volt cobalt batteries. Then I bought a 24 volt to 12 volt converter and 12 volt light bulbs. I ended up welding on half inch steel rods for the pegs and then tested them. For the paint color, I decided to use black for more of a Batman themed bike. Definitely stay tuned because I'll be adding some gadgets onto this in future videos. For the headlight, I plug in my 24 volt battery and then turn it on using a handlebar switch. I'm using a 12 volt bulb, I ended up taking off the plastic bulb so the LED lights are revealed. Then I cut out a piece of acrylic glass with a hole saw and used some sandpaper to rough it up. And then I taped the acrylic glass onto the bulb. So here's the main enclosure of the bike with the batteries installed. To 
cool down the motor controller, I 3D printed out these plastic air vents which will redirect the incoming air into the enclosure of the bike. Overall these work really well. And then to operate the bike I have to press the flush mounted switch to turn it on. After that's pressed I can now use the drive system. Alright guys, if you made it this far, you guys are some real viewers. I hope you enjoyed the video, and make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.